guess I'll start by saying good afternoon and welcome on board the Vagabond. It's been a while since we gave you guys a tour of our boat. So we got her early last year. So we've had her for two years now. We have well and truly moved in and we just wanted to show you guys our home. If you're new here, welcome. This is La Vagabond. And before this boat, we were on a mono hull, which is essentially half the size and we were on her for three years. We love our boat and um, yeah, hope you enjoy the boat tour. I'm gonna quickly roll the intro and then we'll get stuck into it. It's summertime And living is easy The boat is a big mess right now, so we really have to clean up before we give you guys the tour. Oh, he's already at it. Thank you. Happens, somebody's always guaranteed to have horns, and right now it's Rails. What I want to know, Elaine is organising this video. We're doing a boat tour, but it's like we've had it for a year since March last year. Yeah, so why are we doing one now? Well, because we've got heaps of new stuff. We've made a few changes to the boat. You know, it was brand new when we gave you the boat tour, and it wasn't much of a home. We didn't have any plants, we didn't have proper bedding. It was, it was fresh. We're struggling to figure out even what was going on, let alone trying to explain it to other people. But like I said, we've officially moved in and um, I thought it'd be a good idea to give you another boat tour. Because it's a home now? It's a home. Okay. All right, let's start out the front of the boat. As the title of this video suggests, this is a tour of our home, not the technical specifications of the boat. What I'm just gonna do here is explain, like I do every time I have a guest on board, I just walk around and explain little different parts of the boat. So what have we got here? This is the front of the boat, Elena. The, the bow of the boat. This is the bow. This is the nose. This is where a lot of the work happens. We gotta furl in the head sail and out the head sail. We gotta hoist the light wind sails here. Anchoring going on. You can see the bridle here at the moment. The anchor goes up and down from here. There's the anchor well there. And we also occasionally sleep here at night time. I slept here last night. And it's great because when it's hot, you get wind coming from underneath you. you up get, your skirt. You get wind going up your kilt. You actually, and when it does blow up, you'll wake up and you'll find that your sheets just sort of billowing up in the morning like that. So every time Riley has a shower, he throws his wet clothes out the bathroom hatch here and it just falls on here. So it's also a great place for drying clothes. And we stargaze out here. This is where we socialize. This is where we are most of the day. If we're swimming, we'll come out here and sunbake and whatnot. Now these are called trampolines, but you're actually not supposed to jump on them if you're a grown adult. We let little kids jump on them, but um, yeah, sometimes when big people jump, the ropes start fraying, like little, little bits of rope start fraying. So it's a common misconception. You're not actually supposed to bounce on the tramps. Water, fuel, and these, these are very large compartments where we store sail bags, fenders, and bits and bobs. We try hard not to fill these up with rubbish. I'll just show you down one of these hatches. They're both the same. This one's just a little bit tidier. You get a hole in your pants. I do. I've got a hole in all of my pants. That's like two seconds from ripping completely through and you're going to be wearing a skort. A skort? No, I like that. <laughs> This is starboard forward. We've got some spare lines, fenders, uh, the secondary anchor, which is a fortress spade anchor, electrical cables for extra length, spear guns, storm sail, downwind uh, head sail, spare sails, code D and code zero, light wind, light wind sails. Fishing rods, the rods are actually up out in the back at the moment. So this is usually where Riley pulls up the mainsail. So he pulls up the mast and I'm pulling through the ropes here at the rope clutch. Um, and then we'll winch the mainsail up. So you can walk all on this roof, even up to the back here. You're helmswoman. I'm helmswoman. Riley's the pulley man. 
you drive in and out of marinas. Out. And most of the women I meet think that that's pretty incredible. Being at the helm is a lot easier than having to like jump onto the jetty and tie off real quick or like tying a knot real quick or you know throwing throwing ropes that can be heavy sometimes. So but I it's love, a lot of responsibility. I know but I like to think that you're still responsible <laughs> even though I'm driving so confidently. I'm like oh if something happens it's Riley's fault. <laughs> 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 it's a false sense of security. It helps, it's, makes me a better driver. This is the cockpit area. We don't hang out here as much as we do up the front. I don't know why. It's hot. It's hotter. It's a lot hotter. <laughs> We're always on anchor and we've always got the wind blowing from the front. So that's the best spot. And then generally speaking in the places that we've been like the Caribbean and the Bahamas, the wind is blowing from east to west. So the sun sets behind you and you've got the wind in front of you in the afternoon. So that's where, that's a good spot to hang out. That's not true today. So there's some tools under here, tools and cleaning products. That's uh, fishing, fishing and safety equipment, free diving gear and spear fishing stuff. And this is our car. <laughs> we go places in this thing. This is Cunningham the second. We lost. take this places where you shouldn't be taking a boat that small. Always with the radio. The engine starts first time every single time. Touch wood. It's just been incredible. What horsepower motor do we have? 15 Honda Highfield Tender. Insane. We've been like on the most ridiculous offshore missions going in search of the big fish. A couple of things that we forgot to mention are the solar panels over there, 560 watts. The water maker here. So we're drinking 99% reverse osmosis. Sometimes we can run this with the solar panels, particularly if we've got the hydro generator going but there'll be more on that on a video called... Renewable Energy. Renewable Energy. Coming out soon. And this is the port aft engine room. And it's similar on the other side. I like this because there's um, a lot of room back there to get to the water maker and to access all the stuff. I recently dropped all the oil and did the engine service and it's pretty easy to access everything so that's always handy it's a pretty simple boat and it's a light boat so we really don't want too much stuff on here so yeah anything we've had done it's just to keep things neater everything kind of needs a spot less is definitely more on this boat and we we prefer it that way but we'll see when the baby comes there's probably going to be toys and all sorts everywhere Riley's going to have a heart attack swim deck fair bit of space here to sunbake so there's a whole bunch of lures the safety stuff is further down in there I'd find that uh, the safety equipment you can stash away a bit because you don't need it every day. When you do need it, you're going to be happy to pull all this stuff out to get to it. So the everyday stuff is here. Lures. Lures, crimps, mono. But I find that we've been getting so many fish with the spear lately that they've just been for longer crossings, just sort of for fun. Our freezers have been full forever now. Mm, and it's fun. It's good to be selective when you're spear fishing. You get exactly what you want in the freezer. Very true. What do you mostly have on the rods? An Alfred. What's Alfred? Little blue one. Like a four, five inch skirt like this. That got eight dolphin fish on our first. Nine. On our first Atlantic crossing. That's a good size. That's a good lure. It's perfect. And then if I want to have a play, I'll put on something bigger. I'll take off the small ones and put something big on because it's annoying pulling fish in when you've got all the sails up. So you want to make it worth your while. So you put something big on, if something hits it, you know it's huge. Okay, let's have a, let's have a bit of fun with it. This is my galley. This is where I spend a lot of time. I do most of the cooking and cleaning. And uh, yes, I've got two fridges in here. I'll give you a bit of a tour. It's not very different from a normal kitchen. And how good and different is that, that it's not that different from a normal kitchen? Yeah, there's no temperature gauge on the oven, so I've always got to guess based upon the numbers. Actually, that's probably in the manual. It probably says what number is what degrees, but I haven't looked at that. I don't burn many things. As you can see, I've baked a lovely loaf of bread, which is a total fluke. <laughs> Decent sized fridge little freezer enough to fit fish and some ice same on the other side cups are in here plates bowls containers and cleaning products down there and pots and pans down there and this is my pantry tends to get a bit messy and we also keep backup food under this couch this is like mostly canned stuff 
navigation station oh, I know. this is where all the big decisions are made this is where boats are won and lost with great power comes great responsibility Elena and uh, you are shining out of your mouth I'm not surprised <laughs> this chair separates the men from the boys no this is where we do the navigating this is most of our electronics terminate here, so these are the ones that we turn on when we go somewhere. So autopilot, hi-fi, VHF, electronics, which is your chart plotters and all that sort of stuff. So and we turn go, that anchor light on while you're there. Turn the anchor light on. Yep, I always forget that. All the bilge pumps, and then there's the fuel and water gauge. This is where we keep our camera equipment and also walkie-talkies, just sort of like the lenses, drones, card readers, hard drives. Hats. Hats. Follow me down below. We used to say downstairs, but on a boat it's called down below. So this is an owner's version, which means Riley and I have this whole hull to ourselves. And the other side there's two heads. Important paperwork goes in here. This is my like side of the boat. Riley's got all his stuff on that side. This is my wardrobe. It's not very big, is it? It's not, and I've really, I'm really impressed with the amount of clothes that I have now. When I first met Riley, it was absolute Absurd. mayhem. But you don't need that much. I find that I just wear the same things over and over. I have like four outfits that I rotate. I still don't even need all of this. Anyway, this is where we charge all of our electrical equipment. So that's out of the way. There's a lot of cords and stuff here. Yeah, if anyone wants to steal anything, this would be a good place. Because you don't want to get all the camera equipment without the charges and everything. Yeah, so if you're going to steal what's up there, definitely steal all the charges. Make the sure you hit both. And this is our bath stain. Put some stuff behind there. Um, I've got a calendar up here so when I'm sitting on the toilet I can see what videos need to be posted each week. It's the only way I'll remember. So this has been amazing. And um, here's a shower. It's actually it's a pretty decent sized bathroom. I'm very happy with it. The best thing by far is being able to sit on the toilet and look out at the ocean. How good's that, Alana? It's pretty dang good. Let me show you the bedroom. Ta-da! Oh, very good. <laughs> this is bed, this is room. So it's a queen size bed. And Yosha drew us that picture. Yosha drew us that painting in the corner there. And this is Riley's wardrobe, which we recently cleaned up yesterday, so. Not much going on there, really. We hang up our backpacks here in the summer and then I guess in winter we have we have coats hanging up here and wet weather gear. And under the bed is where the wet weather gear is right now and some suitcases. Come child. Um, where's the light switch? It's right there. So this is the port aft cabin. Under that bed Riley also has some like important tools that he can pull out real quick some books so this is um where the dagger boards are so that's why that is coming out like that and we recently had two males in here so <laughs> i haven't cleaned it yet excuse the mess actually there's a few footprints but it's not too bad and this is the spare room i'm a little bit embarrassed to show you this room right now <laughs> it's just where we plonk everything uh, this is actually going to be our baby's room yeah anyway nothing really to see here this is our junk room at the moment but essential, really essential. That back room is the guest room, and yeah, when there's someone, when we have more people at the moment, they have to sleep there, which I feel very sorry for them. But what can we do? Hello. This episode was brought to you by Audible, who we're really happy to be teaming up with again. Riley's been listening to a lot of Audible books lately. So many. He showed me. It's a, honestly been insane. I think it was like 80 hours in a month I'm or like, something. Yeah. I think he's trying to clock in a few hours before the baby comes because you're not going to have that much time. In a that's few what months. everyone keeps telling me. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's what's my version of nesting or whatever it is. <laughs> so the book I'm recommending is Yuval Noah Harari's 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. It is an absolute cracker. I've, I've obviously been reading a lot lately and this is by far the most interesting and thought provoking of the material I've been perusing of late. You gonna play it? Yep, I can play that. So, the best advice I can give a 15 year old stuck in an outdated school somewhere in Mexico, India or Alabama is don't rely on the adults too much. Most of them mean well, but they just don't understand the world. In the past, it was a relatively safe bet to follow the adults because they knew the world quite well and the world changed slowly. But the 21st century is going to be different. 
Because of the increasing pace of change, you can never be certain whether what the adults are telling you is timeless wisdom or outdated bias. So that's one small part of um, obviously of a much larger book that I found really interesting because it got me thinking about Elena and I having a kid and we're thinking about homeschooling and whether or not the information that I'm going to be able to give him as he's growing up is going to be relevant in the future. Yeah, quite as relevant as what as what I was learning when I was growing up. Yeah. Anyway, I, it just uh, it got me really thinking. If anyone's got any thoughts or ideas about that, please let us know in the comment section. I'd be interested to hear what you say about that. So Audible have an unmatched selection of exclusive audio called Audible Originals. Excuse. With storytellers from worlds as diverse as sci-fi, journalism sci and literature. So you should definitely check out those. And right now for a limited time you can get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month, which is more than half of the regular price. So if you're interested, please feel free to go to audible.com forward slash SLV. Or alternatively, you can text SLV to 500 500. So that's audible.com forward slash SLV. And alternatively, you can text SLV to 500 500. And you can see the link to that is also in the description below. Um, enjoy, guys. We really love Audible. so um... It's good. We're encouraging people to read. What, a, what an awful thing for us to be doing. <laughs>